uh, and first, I'd like to start off just congratulating the Sixers on their season, you know, their entire organization, their coaching staff, their players, ownership, management. Every game was hard fought. It was uh, a great series. Each game could have gone either way, but it was a hard fought series, and uh, we're fortunate. And now we know we got to get ready for Indiana. Questions? I'm sorry, Steve. I was going to say, just for you guys, the big plays at the end there. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, the, the, the entire series, I thought the start of the game was important for us to bounce back like that, to be ready to build a big lead. Then we, they, they fought back, which there's going to be runs. Then we responded again. And then the fourth quarter, it was one big play after the next. And a lot of times it was the hustle plays and, that's the thing I love about our team. It's, it's a team. And they're fighters. They don't stay down. And I think that's the, the biggest part of, of mental toughness is always you know, having the, the ability to, to believe you can do better. And, and every, whether we win or we lose, we always want to do better. And so the way they responded to get ready for the game, I felt we were going to play well. And then, you know, we, Dante, you can't say enough about just the, his all-around play. Uh, shot making, hustle, defense, uh, you know, Maxie's a load to deal with, pick and rolls, you know, transition, everything. And, you know, he's, he, you, when he gets off the ball, he doesn't stop moving. You got to keep moving with him. And I thought Dante's effort was terrific. And Josh was Josh. And then OG had a number of big plays. Uh, Isaiah had a tough battle inside and Mitch gave us really good minutes. And then, uh, when Deuce came back in the fourth quarter, he had a big shot, made some big plays for us as well. So it was a great team effort. And then Jalen, of course, you can't say enough about it. It's just every big shot, and they're, you know, they're getting the ball out of his hands. And our guys did a good job of spacing and getting the ball back to him and creating the, the, the right shots for him. And then his shot making and tough plays and you know his ability to, he gets knocked down and he gets right back up. He keeps going. He never stops. Josh always seems to be playing in pain, dealing with one thing or another. Was he a little close to having to come out? Because he looked, he looked like he was scuffling there. The- Josh is never close to coming out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so so it, 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 was, it was a passing thought. I let it pass. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. He's been knocking down big three. Yeah, he's just he's a player and you know, he's put a lot of time into into shooting. I always feel like I don't know what it is about him. Uh there's so many intangibles that that he has that makes your team good. And I always have the belief that when it's a big shot it's going in. Uh he just got has that ability. Or you need an offensive rebound, he's gonna go through, you know, four or five people to go get it. You know, it's a loose ball. He's he's gonna make something happen. You know, so uh, he's he's just a, a fierce, fierce competitor, and he has the ability to think on his feet. And I think those are huge, huge assets for our team. You know, it, it, so there's it, in a, in a, when you play them because of what you're doing, there you're not gonna have any one guy. We started off with OG on them, and then we went to Josh, and then. Dante had them at times, Deuce had them at times, but there's also a lot of rotation involved. So we we thought, let, let's try it. We just kept going to give them different looks was the main thing. And then and you're still in rotation, so you still got to have other guys get to them. And I thought our communication today was a lot better. How about the way that they attacked the rim? I know that that was the last time I asked you a question. You were real. That was a real big, important part of what you wanted the team to do. Yeah, and you know, I think we, you know, we wanted to attack them before they got set, and then when they got set, to keep them moving and then hit the paint and attack the rim. And when they, you know, Embiid's a, a defense unto himself with his rim protection, and he's got great hands. And so you just gotta, you, you gotta make your rim reads correctly. So we have to space off that, and you gotta be, have the ability to spray the ball out and create good shots for each other. And when we do that, good things come from it. But they're a heck of a defensive team. They're long. They're athletic. They're quick. Uh, they change things up. You know, so a lot of credit to them. But I thought our guys responded well. At the end of the game, you uh, 
you guys were up three with about 25 or seconds left. You went, you went small. So yeah. You on that How much of that is influenced by just kind of the end of, of game five? No, nah, you know, it's, we've talked about those things. Like, it, it, it happens. So because it would happen, maybe there was, you know, like you're, you're more in tune with it, but you're also, you're in the same situation. Like I thought that's why I was saying our communication was a lot better today in all areas. So if you go into the line and it's the same thing, you're up one and now you, you don't know if you're going to be up two or you're going to be up three and to understand where you are in the game and exactly what we want to get done. And, and I think everyone made sure everyone was on the same page. And so... Because it was pretty obvious when Dante's at the line and you guys are at one at that time, like everybody was walking yeah. around talking to everybody. Yeah, and it's and it's something that you know like should happen all the time and it didn't. And sometimes you have slippage, and then sometimes when something like that happens, it crystallizes the thinking for everybody. And so that's you know, and we're not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes along the way. And I think that you see that you know in the playoffs, crazy stuff happens, and then it's how you respond. And so, you know, there was a crazy game two, crazy game five, and then to have the ability to come back from that. And each game is different. So you, you can't hang your hat. You can't look backwards. You, and that's why having a routine and how you get ready for each game all season long, you don't want to break from that. You, know, you want that to be your habit. To, to come into hostile territory and to, to win this game, is this a, a set? Was it hostile? I mean, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a satisfying end of the first round for you to, to be able to handle uh, business you know, like this and to go to the next round? Yeah, Philly's a great sports town. Guy, great. You know, I, I coached here a couple of years, a long time ago. And it's just that their fans are, are great. Uh, it's a great basketball city, you know, in terms of great high school basketball, great college basketball, uh, and a great pro team with a, with a rich history. So it's it's a great atmosphere to, to be in. Uh, and then, of course, I think the proximity to New York, when we end up having a lot of fans here as well, uh, uh, we feel we have the best fans in the world. They travel, so they go with us wherever we go. Uh, but it was, it was, it, it's great to play in that atmosphere where there's so much passion amongst the fans. What's the, what's the pride level as a head coach to lead this team to victory? Do you, do you feel? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the pride level is I know uh, that we have a great team. And I'm fortunate to be coaching them. And I I don't mean that in just in bas in terms of the basketball who they are as people, um, they're great to be around every day. Um, they care about each other. They they want to play as a team, and I think that makes the game enjoyable. And I think there's an appreciation for it. Uh, that's one um, uh, how big is Julius' presence tonight? Then? It's great. It's great to see him. You know, it's like yeah, it's you, you miss the smile you, and. You know, you're talking about, and people tend to forget because he's been out for a while. He's he's an All Star and he's an All NBA player. You know, and we've said it all season long that we're not. We knew we couldn't replace him individually. We had to do it collectively, and that's what makes the group so good. You know, okay, so he's he's out. So okay, well, how do we compensate for that? So everyone has to pitch in and do a little bit more, um, play great defense, the things that we could do as a team. That you know, there, there are nights Julius can get you 40 points and you know, 20 rebounds and 10 assists. You know, so you're not you're not replacing that individually. But it was great to see him. He's in good spirits, and he's on his way. Um, this is one of the craziest, most competitive first round series that a lot of people remember. I mean, what does it do for you guys going forward that you had to go through? I mean, this was not a number seven seed you guys were playing. Really. Yeah, and, and they're a really good team. But I think. For a lot of our guys, a lot of our guys don't have a lot of playoff experience. So I think going through a series like this is invaluable to them. And then there's a quick turnaround in getting ready for Indiana. So that's our challenge. But to understand in the playoffs, you know, it's there's high intensity. There's a lot of emotion in it. And crazy things can happen, in good and bad. And you got to be ready to handle both. And you got to keep moving forward, but you can't change your approach. So each game, like, we can't feel too good about this. You know, I told them, enjoy it to midnight. I guess we're already past midnight, so we're, already, we're thinking about what we have to do next. Right, thanks, okay, thank you.